In many social videos, for example, Gary V's productions, you've seen the use of a time elapsed progress bar. The progress bar is yet another visual element to keep us entertained, and it has a practical use in showing us how far along we've progressed in watching a given video. In this video, I show you four different style examples and how to create them in Camtasia. But, as with many of these tutorials, the concepts can easily be executed through many of the other popular video editors. Let's dive in! Hey, it's Gord here. Welcome! If it's your first time here, and it's your passion to make great videos, become a ninja at video editing, and learn more tips on how to succeed with video and marketing on YouTube, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. Okay, so we're inside Camtasia, and the first example we're going to show is a progress line bar. As you can see here, I have three scenarios set up here. Each one will be explained. One's just slightly different than the other. In the first one here, you can see there's a shape. And on top of the shape is a transition. And if I just mouse over, you can see it says slide right. And I come up here on the left in transitions. You see there's a slide right. You see how it goes from the left to the right. That's the transition we're going to use. So all we did to get that shape was to go to our annotations and go to shapes and we brought on a shape so i'm going to show you here so although we have a right rectangle there this was white all we did was you know put the shape on there stretch it out and that was basically how we put the shape on and we colored it red so i'm going to remove the white one here and then on top of that we added this transition so i'm going to delete that and show you how we put that transition on so we just put it on but you see um, it starts at the beginning with the default length. We want it to go all the way across. So now that we've done that, you can see slide right if we just press play here. Do you want to create some? So I think you get the idea there. And as it goes across, you, know, you eventually will end at the end of the clip. That's because we made the length of the line bar the length of the clip. So that was pretty easy. And this implementation uh, just required use of the transition called slide right. In the next example, which still looks the same, we utilized also the rectangle shape, which I already went through in the first step on how to get that on screen. But then we added a custom animation. And the key thing here is there's just a begin and an end. And again, you know, you want to start out and I'm going to show you here. You see this very small um, shape here. Well, that's the rectangle. And if you look here, you'll see that as we go along, it expands out. So we created an end keyframe scenario, right? I'm just going to show you. And we brought the full length of the, sh of the shape to stretch out for the length of the base of the 1080 by 1080 uh, grid that we used for our canvas. So again, that just goes to the end. So now if we go from the beginning, you see it stretch out and it go through to the end. But there's one trick here if you're using the animation, and that is you need to be sure that you set the property, enable easing, and set it to linear. So it's a consistent flow throughout. If I change that to something like auto or exponential in and out, you're going to see there's a difference. So I'm going to show you how that looks. And we can do that simply by taking this animation and putting it in parallel on top of our shape one. And I'm going to just, for, for the sake of demo, I'm going to move the shape one above so we can see that we have two going here. So if we start them from the beginning, you see they run in parallel nicely, the same timing across. So both methods look the same. But if I change the animation, enable easing from linear to say exponential in and out. So watch what happens. So you see it starts out way ahead and then the bottom one starts to play catch up and then the top one will race in at the end. So that's not what we want. Again, this is just a reminder telling you set enable easing to linear and then you're going to get the same, same kind of result in you using the animation approach, the custom animation for the progress bar. The third example here is just to show you that we created our own little PNG file outside of here that was 1080p wide and whatever length. And then we can, you know, scale the size and, you know, use it whatever size we want. And then 
what you can do is just use the crop and trim it back to get it to work for your needs. So there we go. Just showing you, you have the ability to do anything you want. So in our case, we put that bar just below the video in, in by design just to make, make it look a little different. And again, is this is using the same slide right transition. In example two, we use what I'm calling the square progress line bar. As you can see, there's four sides. And for the duration of the video, you will get a progress bar, which will end at the top. It's kind of cool. It's different. And um, let's just talk about the differences between this and the last one we did with animation. As you can see, first off, there are four different shapes. These are all the rectangles. So as you can see, the first one here starting in the top right is uh, a rectangle. And then when we get to the beginning of the second one, it starts there down the second leg and then the next shape down across on the third leg. And then the fourth rectangle goes to the top. So these are all animations added to the same shape and just the angle the angle is changed on a few of the shapes to make it happen and a few other changes so let's just quickly go through this so the first shape here as you can see if i go to the beginning of the keyframe up in the top right corner you can see again the rectangle has been reduced to just you know almost like a uh, just a line and that's all there is to start and then at the end of, of the keyframe it ends at where the full length of that line draw is. Now, if you notice that each of these segments starts approximately seven seconds or so, um, you know, 6.29 frames, that's seven seconds. So we have four segments times seven is 28 seconds. And that's how long the whole, um, the whole video clip is. So we're trying to approximate, it's just over 28 seconds. And so we're using seven seconds per segment. And that means each animation ends at seven second increments, as you can see. So it's equally applied throughout and that the motion that you'll see in the progress bar will be smooth and consistent. Now, the, the first, first one, as you can see, was just another one of those straight um, line bars, which like we did in the first one, except we started and made the direction go in the opposite direction as the, the, the line bar that we had on the bottom. Now, when we get to the side here for the second leg, as you can see, we start out at the start keyframe with a rectangle that's sort of the size of the overlap. And also note on the rotation, we have a 90 degree and that's to give us the vertical angle. So the rectangle will, will go and the motion will go in a vertical direction. And then the end keyframe, you can see is down at the bottom. Likewise, in the next one, this next leg, the third one across, we have the rotation back down to zero because it's a horizontal bar. And again, in this case, at the start, we had the, the rectangle base start out to be the size of, of the overlap. And then the end position again, seven seconds later, right to the end of the, the row. And then on the top, the last piece again, we're going to just go in here. As you can see, again, we have the 90 degree rotation. And at the start, we have the same shape for the rectangle covering just the overlap area. And then for our end keyframe filling out. So those are the key attributes that make up the performance of the square progress bar. And let's just play a little bits of it so you can see. Do you want to create some fancy special effects in your videos, but you aren't sure how to go about putting the video together? So you see how smooth that is? And it just, you know, continues on and runs nicely. In example three, we use what I call the progress bar letter effect. What you see here is a little template overlay that I created. It's a PNG file. I created it in, in Photoshop. You could do this in PowerPoint or Canva or all kinds of other tools that that may be free, but the core thing is that where you see the black areas that it's transparent. So with that overlay on top, we have um, the ability to see a progress bar underneath. So I'm just letting go of that. I'm going to delete that. And then we look at our example here. So as you can see, the red slides over top, the white underneath, and we have our video below and it looks really cool. And again, it's for the length of the video. So how is that done? So of course, I was just talking about our overlay. So if I slide the overlay out of the way, well, guess what's underneath here? 
a line bar, progress bar, with the red going on top of the white. So what we actually have here is, is, the, is the shape, just like we drew, drew in the example earlier where we were using the transition effect. And in this case, all I have is, as you can see here, the slide right transition. But what we did is we put a white rectangle underneath. So all you have there, if I just go on top here and remove that, you can see it's just a white static bar across the top. And then we have the, the, the uh, other bar on top as well, which is red, which has the slide right transition. And then on top of that is our custom callout that has the lettering in it. And it, this runs again, making everything for the length and duration of the video clip. Now let's look at example four, our final example. And in here we use what I call the clock effect. So watch this. Do you want to create some fancy special effects in your... So as you can see, we have a clock with the, with the red time as the elapsed time being covered over the white circle as we go and it goes for the duration of the clip. So how do we do that? So simply put, I'm just going to ungroup here and you'll learn in a second why we had to group these. I have a white circle on the bottom and a red circle on the top. But the red circle is characterized by what you can see here is the radial wipe transition. And the radial wipe is this transition right here. So see how it goes almost like a clockwork uh, movement. And that was done just by overlaying two circles. There's the red and the white circles. Okay. And then on top of that again was just the radial wipe. And again, if we wanted to take that and put it back on, we just would go and slide it on here, just like we did before. And we would put, stretch it out right across and let the transition effect go for the entire length. When you, by default, put the two circles on top of each other in the radio wipe, they're that size. In order to move these things and proportionately scale them down, it's best to group the two items. And then when they're grouped, as you can see, the scale proportion works nice. So in this case, you know, you may decide you want to move it down here and that's fine too, but that's why we do the grouping. Wow. Adding visual elements like progress bars, motion graphics, and kinetic text help to take the post-production quality of your videos to the next level. To learn more great special effects in Camtasia with kinetic text, be sure to click on the link for the playlist featured on this page or click on the link in the video description below. And if you need any training assistance with Camtasia or help in editing and producing your videos or screencasts, be sure to reach out to me through my website, gordeisman.com. See you in another video soon.